right? Horizontal shifts. Let f be a function and c a positive real number. The graph of y equals f of x plus c is the graph of y equals f of x shifted c units to the left. And you might think, be thinking, why is it c to the left if it's a plus? Right, you're gonna, some of you, I know I checked the Desmos activity, right? You were putting shifting right when you saw a plus, but if you checked it in that little slider, if you put the numbers, values in, you would see that if it's plus C, it moves to the left. Well, why does it move to the left? Let's think about this, right? So I put, wrote two different formats for equations. I put vertex, the vertex form of a quadratic and uh, point slope form of a linear function. And notice both of them have the minuses in them. Both of them have subtra minuses, subtraction signs in them, right? So the subtraction is already part of the equation, right? So vertex form is x minus h squared plus k, right? We're looking at the difference between those values. Yeah, when we were working with linear functions last year, Point slope is y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. So we look at the difference between the values. The negative is already in the equation. That subtraction is already there. So if we have x plus c, what we really had, and I like you add this to your notes. You already have everything else. Right? So if we have x plus c, that means what we really have is x minus a negative c. So we are, we are adding something negative. That's why it became a plus, because it was minus a negative, and it's going to move to the left. That's a way you can remember. All right? The graph of y equals f of x minus c is the graph of y equals f of x shifted to the right c units. And it's to the right because what we really have is x minus a positive c. All right? So because that uh, subtraction or negative sign is already part of the equation, that's a plus, and I just can't see. There we go. Um, because that subtraction or negative sign is already part of the equation, right? if we see a minus, it means we're adding a positive C. Right? And that could be a way to help you remember the horizontal shifts. So a horizontal shift is something added to X. If we have X plus C, it moves to the left because what we really have is X minus a negative C. If we have X minus C, it moves to the right because what we really have is x minus a positive c. And this will be true all the time for all the different functions. If you have noticed that uh, that's no function in particular, um, just showing you that if you have plus c, your whole function will move to the left. And if you have x minus c, the whole function will move to the right. And it doesn't matter what kind of function it is. There we go. True all the time. All right, so horizontal translations, of course, in the center. Again, we have f of x equals x squared. We're focusing on that because that's what we're learning to graph using translations. We'll learn how to graph the other ones when we get there. The vertex is at 0, 0. All right, look at, let's look at the red graph, f of x plus 2. All right, so we're adding 2 not to the whole function, but to x. All right, so that would be f of x equals x plus 2 in parentheses squared. We're adding 2 to x, but we know what we're really doing. This is really x minus a negative 2. Right? So now the vertex is at negative 2, because we're really adding in a negative. So if we have x plus 2, which is the same as x minus a negative 2, that will shift the graph two units to the left. What if we have f of x minus 1? Right, so we know that what we really have is x minus a positive 1. Right, so that's going to shift the graph, and I can actually put the square here if you'd like. That's going to shift the graph one unit to the right. All right, notice the vertex now. 
is at 1, 0. Of course, not just the vertex changes, right? Every point on this function changes, right? So every single point has moved one unit to the right. So here, for instance, we have the point 1, 1 on the graph of f of x equal x minus 1 squared. We have the point 1, 2. And on the graph of, uh, did I put 1, 2? <laughs> Let's try that again. We did too many vertical shifts. <laughs> we shifted 1 to the right. That would be 2, 1. The x changed, not the y. And how about, all right, so let's look at the same point on the red graph. f of x equals x plus 2 squared. All right, so 1, 1 has now shifted 2 to the right, and now it's at the point negative 1, 1, right? 2 less. All right, so if we have x minus 1, that means we're really adding a positive 1, and it will shift the graph one unit to the right. So as you can see, a number added or subtracted from x will cause a horizontal shift or a translation in the function, but opposite the way of the sign of the number because there was already a negative there. So minus a negative makes it a plus and minus a positive makes it a minus. All right, so let's use this to graph. All right, and you have this one in your notes right next to horizontal shifts. All right, so, and I'll write it again one more time. You don't have to write this again down again. You, ha you can just look right up on, on the previous graph and you've got it. But you can't see the previous graph from here, so I will write it down again. Negative 3, 9, negative 2, 4, negative 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, 4, and 3, 9. All right, so let's graph our parent function first. So 0, 0, and you'll do the same thing. Right? And so when we're graphing using transformations, we're going to always graph the parent function first. So 0, 0, 1, 1, negative 1, 1. 2, 4, negative 2, 4, and 3, 9, so 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and negative 3, 9. So it's really easy to do because it's the same seven points all of the time. There we go. There's the graph y equals x squared. All right, so now we want to graph, uh, there it is, f of x equals x plus 3 squared. Notice the 3 is added to x because it's in the parentheses. The x and the 3 are squared. Of course, that is not x squared plus 9, right? And actually, we'll see that it is not x squared plus 9. If you were to square x plus 3, you'd have x plus 3 times x plus 3. All right, so now we've got something added to x. That's going to give us a horizontal shift. We see a positive. But remember, when we see a positive, it's really x minus a negative 3. All right, so that means we have a horizontal shift, but we're shifting in the negative direction. We're shifting to the left. So horizontal, we're going to shift 3 units left. We have nothing added to the whole function, so there is no vertical shift. We can have both. We just are doing one at a time. All right, so now we'll write down the vertex. Let's do the shift, and then we'll write down the vertex. All right, so for shifting 3 to the left, the vertex was at 0, 0, right? It's going to be 3 less. So let's just shift every point on our graph 3 to the left, right? So 0, 0 becomes 1, 2, 3 becomes a negative 3, 0. And of course, that's our new vertex. And now we'll shift. So we'll shift 1, 1, right? So 1, 2, 3. You can count 1, 2, 3. Or you might notice it has the same shape all the time. 
and after you've got three points, it's pretty easy to figure out where the other ones go. But anyway, we'll just count, right? Because we're focusing on the shifting now. Uh, we can get a little more, we can get a little fancier after you've seen the graph quite a few times. All right, so now we're going to shift uh, the point to four over three to the right, or excuse me, three to the left. So one, two, three. And we'll do the same thing for negative two, four. One, two, three. Of course, you can't really see my pen moving, but you can see I moved three to the left. Now we'll switch the top two points. One, two, three. One, two, three. It's as easy as that. If you can count to three, you could graph this function by just shifting all the points three to the left. And here we go. All right, so here is the graph f, f of x equals x plus three squared. Let's fill in the domain and range. Oops, well, I guess I'm just going to have to leave it like that. It's crossing. All right, so, of course, the domain is not gonna, never going to change. Negative infinity to infinity. The range is our y value. The lowest y value is 0. So shifting the graph to the left had no impact at all on our range. It's still 0 to infinity. So if you have a horizontal shift, it won't change your range, but a vertical shift will. So this function is the parent function shifted left three units. Adding to x shifts the function left because this is really x minus a negative. There we go. Need two parentheses there. And shifting or subtracting to x. Make that Subtracting to x will shift the function right because this is really x minus a positive c. Right. All right, so I'm going to do this one and this one, and I may not do any. Actually, this is going to be the last. Actually, you know what? I'm going to make this the last one. So we'll look at, uh, in the next lesson, let's, so we just looked at vertical. We just looked at horizontal. Let's put vertical and horizontal together in the next lesson. So I said this was going to be two lessons. It might be three. Right? But we're going to stop right here. Right? So thanks for watching. Bye for now.